everybody! This video is on the topic of socializing your puppy during the pandemic while you're sheltering at home and rehearsing social distancing. Now there's a great article in Psychology Today on this topic written by one of my favorite veterinary behaviorists, Dr. Ilana Reisner, who's based in the Philadelphia area. So if you're in Philadelphia, I really recommend you go to her because she is just amazing. What is socialization? For me, it's teaching puppies to be calm, confident, and cope with different environments and different situations they're going to experience in their adult lives. Now, dogs experience the world in different ways, through sight, sound, smell, and touch, which would be environmental interactions and social interactions. And I'm going to go over each of these in terms of socializing your puppy in these times where we can't just go into a crowded area and hope that the puppy learns to be social, which actually, in my opinion, isn't the best way to socialize a puppy. So in fact, um, this more careful way of socialization where you're not just exposing your puppy to strange people and dogs who you have very little control over, this way of socializing your puppy might actually be in your puppy's best interest. So I'm going to go over a list of different things you can do to socialize your puppy during these times. The first category is sight. This consists of living beings like people and animals, as well as inanimate objects such as man-made things like umbrellas, as well as things in nature like trees. Now, we can do a lot of socialization without even having our dogs have to meet other people. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, dogs notice the appearance of the object or the animal and also their movement. So one thing you can do is get a balloon to simulate um, trees blowing in the wind and you can socialize your puppy to the movement, the weird movement of a balloon, the weird movement of bags, curtains, sheets hanging over something that are slightly moving. You can, you can socialize your dog to the different objects as well as how they move and the same with people. Now people appear differently. Some dogs are don't get socialized to a lot of people and they just love everyone no matter what they look like and no matter how they move. But we can socialize dogs to the way people look and the way people move without having to have our dog around other people. And I actually do this with clients, with dogs with reactivity and aggression or fear towards strangers because you can focus on the trigger of how the dog, what the dog is worried about, which is how the person moves and how the person looks and not so much the problem of uh, it being a stranger. So um, I'm going to show you a video of my little puppy who was worried about strangers and how I worked with her um, to teach her that strangers were cool no matter what they did and no matter what they looked like. So you can change your appearance by carrying backpacks and bags around your house. And at first, when you're doing these uh, types of behaviors where you're changing how you look, you're going to do it while your puppy's looking at you. So if you're going to put on an overcoat, your puppy's going to be sitting out in front of you. You can show your dog the coat and then carefully put it on and then leave the room and come back. If you're going to be wearing a weird hat or a hoodie, you're going to show your puppy that you're putting the hat on. You can even have your puppy check out the hat first and then put it on and then leave the room and come back or walk around the room, walk with a cane, walk with two canes, shuffle your feet, do all the different movements that people are going to be doing. You can practice how people will pass your puppy on the street. You can walk past your puppy. You can jog past your puppy and you can run past your puppy. If you have a skateboard or a bike, you can practice pushing the skateboard or bike around your puppy. And anytime you start adding a lot of movement, you really want to be reinforcing your puppy every time the object moves because dogs naturally will want to follow you if you're moving fast. So you don't want to encourage your puppy um, to be chasing anything that moves. So what you can do is if you have someone else who's sheltering with you, you can sit with your puppy and as they move, you mark and reinforce, good, with a calm treat delivery so that you're calming your puppy when the movement is happening. I got a lot of fallen branches around my property that I need to take care of.
If you don't have a helper, you can get a mat for your puppy to settle on and drop treats between his paws calmly as you walk past your puppy first, then jog, and then run. Now, if your puppy gets excited and gets up, you can simply go back to the mat, get your puppy to relax and calm down, and then just go back a step to slower movements. When out and about, you want to keep your distance from other people and dogs, but you can mark and reinforce your dog for noticing different people and dogs. Also, if you go somewhere that's busy, you can sit in your car with the windows closed and possibly the air conditioning or heater running and have your puppy propped up in their crate or just on, on top of some pillows so they can see out the window and you can reinforce your puppy for watching people pass by. In fact, two different places that are great to go are the supermarket. You can park really close because people are gonna continue to go to the supermarket and at a vet. So you can park at a vet and what's happening in San Diego is the vets are coming out and seeing dogs in the parking lot and then taking the dog inside rather than um, the clients going in. But regardless of, of what they're doing, um, your dog will see dogs going from cars into a building and you can reinforce your dog for watching. And this is a really safe way to socialize puppies anyway, because you don't really want to expose your puppy to um, being inside of a vet veterinary office without being held or confined. So um, it's a very safe way to socialize a puppy. For socializing your puppy to inanimate objects, I like to use the game Go Check It Out, and I have a video tutorial on how to train that, but basically it's a cue to investigate or touch an object in order to gain access to reinforcement. And the reason I like this game is that it's really building reinforcement value to the different things that your puppy is seeing, rather than just presenting the puppy with whatever it is and then having that thing disappear. Um, and the reasoning behind this is um, you have an eight-week-old puppy and you go somewhere and they see an umbrella and then you check it off your socialization checklist. But think about it, like if you were a little baby and your mom's carrying you around in the street and you, someone with an umbrella passes by, you're really not going to have a strong memory um, of that umbrella when you're two years old your mom's gonna ask you, hey, do you remember when you saw that umbrella when you were eight weeks old in my arms? And as a little baby, um, as a little kid, you're gonna say, uh, no. <laughs> you might have an aunt that uh, came to visit you when you were two, and then she comes back when you're four and says, oh my goodness, you've grown, do you remember me? And you say, no, I don't remember you at all. Because um, basically what happens is as you grow, memories disappear that, weren't, that aren't meaningful. So in order to teach puppies um, to make memories of different objects and strange, strange the, the way people look and the way objects look that are strange, to make them memorable and positive, we can use training games and really draw attention to those objects rather than just have the puppy in the environment and hope that they're looking up and seeing that someone has an umbrella when they're walking past, sniffing the ground, maybe smelling another, another dog's pee. So um, for me, it's really important to play these games where you're making a positive association with the objects and the people. So another thing is, uh, it depends on the dog's breed, um, and personality, but a lot of dogs, you will need to continue to do this socialization throughout 
um, from, from when the dog's a puppy to adolescent to even into the adult life of the dog. So, for example, I have border collies and I worked on wearing hoodies, but I don't particularly like to wear a hoodie a lot. And then um, it rained uh, a few weeks ago and it rarely rains here and I had my hoodie up and my dogs didn't bark at me but they looked at me funny like whoa you don't usually have a hoodie on so in my head I thought oh time to do some more training games where I changed my appearance um, because the hoodie was um, suddenly weird so you're basically just teaching your your puppy and adult dogs that all these weird things that humans do are normal and all the weird things in the environment are normal the next category is sound, and I actually just made a video on training your dog not to bark at noises outside the house, and those training techniques in that video, which I'll link in the description below, is the same process that you would use when teaching a puppy to be calm and confident when hearing different types of noises. So the only difference is that you might expand the different, um, the different types of noises that the puppy is hearing. And in this modern world, it becomes very easy because we have computers and phones that can simulate other noises. Um, so there's two different categories of noises that I like to think about, and one is continuous noises, and the other are out of the blue noises, like the smoke alarm when it starts beeping. Um, so don't use really scary noises at first. A lot of people think that they have a young puppy and basically you just expose them to whatever noise it is and that will teach them that the noise is perfectly fine, but this is simply not true. One thing can happen is that um, if there's a, loud, a sudden loud noise like a firework, smoke alarm or gunshot, or a balloon popping, it can actually traumatize the puppy and have the reverse effect of making the puppy scared of noises. So whenever you work with noises with a puppy, you want to start out with the noises at a very low volume. So if you were maybe a hunter or something, or your puppy has to be around gunshot or fireworks, you wouldn't start with fireworks. You would start with something as simple as clicking your fingers to popping some bubble wrap, to someone popping a balloon way in the distance to closer. And then when your puppy is good with very loud noises close by where you can turn the radio up super high, then you could start moving on to the ones that you want to work on, like gunshot at a distance before close up or fireworks where um, you know where the location of the fireworks are going to be and you're further away, maybe, you know, 30 miles away from them and then you get closer when your puppy is confident. If you have a dog that unfortunately has already experienced a smoke alarm, I have a video on how to work with that dog in the description below. Here's some examples of sounds to work on. Fans, dishwashers, washing machines, dryers with something clanking around in there. Um, you can watch movies on Netflix with your puppy, different action movies, movies with kids, yelling, um, and you can look up on, on YouTube uh, the sound of babies crying, the sound of streets with cars honking, but basically with staccato sounds like knocking and tapping on the windows or the doors or beeping from your phone or barking noises, I suggest following the, the video on teaching your dog not to bark at noises for that, where you really want to do it carefully um, by first making the noise very softly and repetitively and then increasing the volume and increasing the time between the noises so it doesn't just startle your puppy and scare them. For example, if your puppy is just laying on the floor and then you play a loud barking dog on your computer, most likely um, it's going to scare your puppy and not teach your puppy to cope and feel comfortable with the noise. So you start with the, a very low volume bark, feed a treat, bark, feed a treat, bark, feed a treat, and then increase the volume to where your puppy is very comfortable with the sound of the barking because it means they're getting a treat. Here you can see I'm working with my little puppy Halo on the sights and sounds of skateboarders. Now I had already worked with the sights and sounds of skateboards at home and you can see he's very comfortable being in front of this park and getting reinforcement for listening to the sounds of the skateboards.
The next category is smell. You can go on sniffy walks where you let your puppy sniff areas where other dogs and people have been, but with a puppy you want to be careful that you keep your dog away from urine and feces of other dogs because of the fact that they haven't had all their vaccinations yet. So you want to be careful with that. Um, if you're worried about that, you can have your puppy carry your puppy or have your puppy in a stroller and they can still smell things from in there because they have such great noses that they can smell things without actually having to touch them. So if you're worried um, about putting your puppy down on the ground without their vaccines, you can do that. You can also spread out a sheet in the park and have your puppy sit on that um, instead of if, if you're worried that there might be parvo or something in that environment, um, that's another thing that you can do. One of my own puppies, Wish, was actually scared of the smell of strangers. So one thing that I did with her that really helped a lot was that every time I brought in a package or groceries, I would let her sniff the groceries and then get a treat. And at first she was a little bit scared of the smells of, the, of where the other people had touched the groceries in the bag, um, but she soon learned that uh, the smell, the different smells of strangers meant reinforcement. And it really fixed that problem of her having a fear of the smell of other people. Some puppies especially fear the smell of men. Um, so this is a great way uh, to, to get your puppy to smell different people without the person actually having to be there. Um, so that's a great tip for dogs, adult dogs that are reactive or fearful or aggressive towards other people. Now, of course, um, I personally am sanitizing my own groceries when I bring them into the house just to prevent the spread of the virus. Um, so if you're doing that, uh, then you can't really do the grocery sniffing thing. Wishy, would you go check it out? Go check it out. The final category is touch, social interactions and environmental interactions. Now environmental interactions are really easy to do in your house. You can set up different surfaces for the puppy to walk across, some being stable, some being unstable like a mattress or have your puppy walk over pillows where they're learning to balance for reinforcement, as well as walking over different surfaces like wood floor, carpet, you can roll out some uh, aluminum tin foil, as they call it in England, where your dog can walk over that, um, walk over wet grass. You really want to make sure <laughs> that if you're living somewhere like California that you socialize your dogs to wet grass because otherwise when it rains they're not going to go to the bathroom outside. So you might not have that problem where you live, but if you're somewhere where it rarely rains, you need to socialize your, your dogs to having wet feet sometimes. Puppies are like human toddlers, except instead of using their hands to explore their environment, they're using their mouth and also their feet, but mainly their mouth, so they're going to be wanting to feel things with their mouth. So it's important to have lots of different types of dog toys and chews for them to experience and experiment with because if you have nothing or very few they're going to be searching for things to investigate which is going to be great for them to grow physically and mentally uh, correctly for them to be doing what they what they naturally should do so just preventing your puppy from doing things um, is not a good idea part of socialization is is learning about the environment through their mouths and so you want to teach them to chew on appropriate toys um, and I have a video um, called uh, No Biting and it's really important to check that out because not only is it talking about um, teaching your puppy to chew on appropriate things but it's also teaching a puppy about social interactions with people and how with human beings social interactions aren't the type of interaction where you use your mouth 
And this is really hard for a lot of puppies to learn at first because they've just been in a world where they've been with their litter mates and all they've been doing is been hanging on each other and biting each other as their way of interacting. So it's going to take some time for the puppy to learn. I suggest working a lot on teaching your puppy to be calm and confident and trust you when you handle your puppy, when you groom your puppy, and when you inspect your puppy to simulate what your puppy might experience when other people want to interact with your puppy or when you take your puppy to the vet, for example. But also you can interact, interact with your puppy through play. You can teach your puppy games like teaching tug and drop. And I have a video on how to train that in the description below. You can also simulate what it would be like if you did have a guest over to your house. So um, in my reactivity video on demand, I actually have this a uh, technique called greeting rituals where you teach your dog um, the ritual that will happen when you actually do have a visitor but you don't use a visitor to begin with because for dogs that are fearful or reactive um, that might be just too much too quickly so instead you teach them the scenario of what would happen to them if a visitor did come over and you practice it like a ritual so um, for some dogs you might meet the person outside and then walk into your house and then sit in the living room um, but if you have a new puppy that's uh, not fearful, you can practice a greeting ritual where you're sitting on the couch, then one of you goes and knocks on the door, you give your puppy a treat, and then you let your housemate into the house, and then you act as though you would to um, greeting a friend where you might go, Hi, how's it going? also practice calm greetings when you return home or when you've put your puppy away and you're letting your puppy back out into the house when you've been practicing separation training you want to make sure your greetings are calm because if you're making your puppy excited every time they see you well the puppy is going to be excited as an adult um, when they see other people coming in um, because that's just what your puppy's been rehearsing I thought I would tell you guys a little story about my little chihuahua Kiko. Um, I got her at eight weeks, but she was very sick with distemper and I had to quarantine her in a room. Um, I think she stayed there basically from when she was eight weeks to five months old in this room because she had a highly contagious disease that shouldn't be spread anywhere. Um, so I didn't want to spread distemper to wildlife or other dogs or the dogs that I worked with. So she was kept in this quarantine environment. I had to wear a marshmallow suit um, to go in and deal with her. And I was very careful not to spread the, spread the disease. But obviously her socialization was very limited. And 16 years ago when I was beginning my career as a dog trainer, I was extremely sad that she was going to miss that window of socialization. So I did the similar things, playing sounds, sights, changing the way I looked. And um, when she first came out of quarantine and was outside in the street for the very first time, she was a little bit worried. But I have to say she is the friendliest dog with other dogs and other people. And what I did when we finally were able to um, become part of the world is that I just took it slowly and carefully. So made interactions positive as they happened. And if she was worried in a certain circumstance, um, I would just make it an easier circumstance. So for example, um, she'd never heard car, real cars and buses before. So um, 
to socialize her to that, even though she was older, I could start from a distance and then get closer to busy roads. And she's really turned into the most wonderful, social little creature that there is. Um, so, of course, I believe that genetics plays a huge role in this and that you might be worried, oh, what if I don't have a super friendly dog and they're stuck in quarantine? Well, the great thing about that is that they're not having these terrible negative experiences that might happen in the real world where a loose dog charges your dog um, or a, a, a tiny kid runs over screaming at your dog while they're in this very fragile state where they haven't yet had positive experiences with other people and dogs. And for a dog that I believe, this is just opinion based, but for a dog that is very sensitive or fearful towards people and dogs already at eight weeks, most likely you're going to have to socialize that puppy for until adulthood at least. So a lot of people think there's this window where you do stuff and then the dog is set for the rest of their life. That's simply not true. It's like that story of, um, if you're a little baby and you meet your aunt, you're not going to remember your aunt when you're a few years old, a few years older. That's that memory is going to be erased. So for socialization, it's really boring, <laughs> but it's an ongoing process, at least until adulthood, I would say. And if you have a very sensitive breed, you have to keep maintaining those positive experiences, positive social experiences with people and other animals as the dog matures. So I just wanted to let you know that. Don't worry, things are gonna be okay. You're not gonna have an abnormal dog. You might actually have a dog that has been socialized better than just dumping them into different environments and hoping that they will cope. I hope you found this video helpful for your training. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of Channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later guys!